the Jell-O program, brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis A. Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Marine's Hymn. Jell-O spells grand enjoyment, friends, whether you find it on a box of Jell-O or on a package of those other wonderful dessert flavors. Jell-O puddings, Jell-O chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch puddings, you know, are made by the makers of Jell-O. And like Jell-O, they're easy to prepare, thrifty to serve, and delightfully good. They give you all the mellow richness of homemade puddings, the tempting old-fashioned goodness of Grandma's creamy masterpiece. Yet how much less time and trouble they take to make. You can make such a variety of desserts, too, with Jell-O puddings. Butterscotch pie, for instance. All you do is prepare a package of Jell-O butterscotch pudding according to directions. Then cook, cool, and turn into a baked 8-inch pie shell. Serve plain or garnish with whipped cream. And you'll say you've never made an easier butterscotch pie or tasted one more delicious. So get a package of Jell-O butterscotch pudding and make the family this rich golden butterscotch pie for tomorrow night's dinner. In pie or in pudding, you'll find Jell-O butterscotch pudding a swell treat. Just like Grandma's, only more so. Marines hymn played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday, February 14th, was not only Valentine's Day, but also the birthday of Jack Benny, who was exactly years of age. <laughs> so let us show you what happened. The time, 7 o'clock last night. The place, Jack's home in Beverly Hills. Take it away. My mama done told me when I was in knee pants my mama done told me, son, a woman will sweet talk and give you... Gee, the it's, my, it's my birthday, and I don't know what to do tonight. Why don't you go to a movie, boss? That's an idea. Let's see. Now look in the paper and see what's playing around. A woman will sweet talk and give you the big eyes. But when the sweet talk is done... Maybe, maybe there's a bank night someplace. <laughs> no, not on Saturday. Now, let's see. A woman's a two-faced, <laughs> worrisome thing to leave you to sing the blues in the night. Gosh. Gosh, I don't know where to go. Now the rains are falling here. The train are calling wooey. My mama done told me... <laughs> Here, that lonesome wit. Say, here's a movie I could see. Uh, I could see Ball of Fire. Yeah, Miss Barbara Stanley's in that. Oh, yes. I saw her in the Brown Derby today, and she walked right by me. Well, what other picture can I see? <laughs> Here, that lonesome whistle blow and cross the trestle. Hooey! <laughs> My mama done told... Oh, here's... Here's Ida Lupino in Ladies in Retirement. Now, she never speaks to me either. <laughs> now, what else? From Natchez to Mobile, from Memphis to St. Joe. St. Joe. What a hit I used to be in that town. <laughs> Boy. Wherever the four winds blow. Very good, Rochester. I wish Johnny Mercer could have heard that. Now sing Rose O'Day. Oh, boss, come now. <laughs> Rochester, I said, sing Rose O'Day. Well, Mr. Benny, if you're in the mood for entertainment, why don't you turn on the radio? The radio's out of commission. Did you kick the tubes out of that thing again? Well. What a temper you got. Every time Mr. Allen has a funny program, crash, bang, zowie. <laughs> Listen, Rochester, Fred Allen hasn't had a funny program since the night his pants fell down and he had Portland's underwear on. <laughs> 
They live in a very dark room, you know. <laughs> oh, say, uh, <laughs> say, here's a, here's a swell double feature tonight at the Bijou. Gary Cooper and Sergeant York and Jack Benny and Charlie's Ann. I think I'll go there. But, Mr. Benny, you've seen Charlie's Ann over 20 times. I've never seen it at the Bijou. <laughs> Might as well take a girl along with me. Uh, give me my little red book, Rochester. The one Mr. Harris sold you when he got married? <laughs> no. No, no, my red book. The one I've always had. Oh, the thin one. <laughs> uh, never mind the book, Rochester. I know who I'll call. Uh, she'd like to go to a movie. From Natchez to Mobile, from Memphis to St. Joe. St. Joe, they love me there. Wherever the flow, I've been in some... Hold it, Roger, sir. Hello? Uh, LaBelle Tour Apartments? I'd like to speak to Miss Scheherazade Crump. <laughs> yes, please. I've been in some big home and her... Hello? Hello, Scheher? <laughs> This is Jack. Uh, Jack Benny, Blue Eyes. <laughs> Say, honey, how would you like to see Gary Cooper and Sergeant York tonight? The other feature, Charlie's aunt. Okay, some other time. So long, Shahar. <laughs> I don't blame her. She's seen it so often, you know. Oh, well, I'll go to a movie alone. On your birthday, boss? Why don't you call that girl you took roller skating last week? Oh, yes, Thelma Stronach. She might be, she might be home now, yeah. From Natchez to Mobile, from Memphis to St. Joe. St. Joe, I can still hear that applause. <laughs> Wherever the four winds blow. Hold it. Hello, say, Thelma, how would you like to go to a movie tonight? Oh, oh, goodbye. <laughs> hmm. Didn't she want to go, boss? How do I know? A man answered. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll think of somebody to take along. I wish I could remember some... Say, Mr. Benny, look who's here. Well, if it isn't little Miss Lee. Well, well, well. For heaven's sake. Hello, Carolyn. Hello, Jack. Happy birthday. Thank you, honey. Say, what have you got in that box? Some candy for you, and I made it all by myself. Oh, some candy, a present. Isn't that thoughtful? My, it's fudge, isn't it? Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to eat a piece right now. Hmm. I, it would taste better, but my mommy told me I mustn't use sugar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it certainly is delicious. Here, Rochester, have a piece. It ain't my birthday. <laughs> Howard. Well, Carolyn, it, it sure is tasty. And, oh, look, here's a piece with a nut in it. Where? Right here, see? Well, thank heaven, that's the eye I lost out of my dolly. <laughs> oh, oh, here, take it, Carolyn. Thanks. Well, I gotta go home now. Goodbye, Jack. Good night, sweetheart. See you tomorrow. Gee, she's a cute kid. She comes in every day. Hmm, 7.30. Well, if I want to take a girl to a movie tonight, I'd better get going. Oh, I know. Why didn't I think of it before? Rochester, get me Miss Ginger Rogers home. Miss Ginger Rogers? Yes, yes. Don't be so surprised. Never mind. I've got a number around here someplace. I'll find it. My mama done told me when I was a knee pain. My mama done told me some. da 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 Hello? Hello, is this Ginger Rogers' house? 
Good. I'd like to speak to Miss McGuire, please. Jack Benny calling. <laughs> I said, uh, Miss McGuire. Oh, she's not working there anymore? <laughs> oh, okay. Goodbye. Guess she must have married that policeman. <laughs> Well, I can scratch Ginger Rogers' name out of my book. <laughs> I'll just... I think I'll just stay home and read. Hand me that Radio Guide magazine, Rochester. Here you are. Oh, by the way, boss, there's a story about you in there. I know. I mean, there is? <laughs> well, let's see it. Say, Rochester, while I'm sitting here reading, you might as well give me a haircut. Then you won't have to do it tomorrow. Uh, get the scissors and everything. Right with you, boss. Let's see, what page is that interview on? Mm. Oh, oh, here it is. Jack Benny, The Real Him. Good title there. <laughs> All set, boss. Hold still. Okay, don't take too much off the sides. Sir. Get a load of this, Rochester. Jack Benny, the sophisticated comedian, is in real life just an assuming country boy from Waukegan. That's me, all right. And this may come as a surprise to you readers, but Mr. Benny is so modest that he has yet to see himself on the screen. Well, <laughs> Rochester. <laughs> when interviewed at his Beverly Hills home, we found... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Many happy returns. Thanks. Well, for heaven's sake, what are you doing with that bowl on your head? <laughs> I'm getting a haircut. What do you think? Rochester, leave my sideburns long. I'm taking rumba lessons. Oh, <laughs> oh, Jack, will you stop trying to look like Cesar Romero? I'm not trying to look like Romero. My goodness, just because I'm an unassuming country boy from Waukegan, I don't have to look like a hick. Oh, you read that article, eh? What article? Right there in that magazine. Jack Benny, the real ham. That's him. <laughs> the real him. It's a pretty good story, but I don't know where they get those photographs of me. Get a load of this one. Look like I've got a double chin. Well, you have got a double chin. I have not. And what's that hanging under your jaw, a cocoon? <laughs> no, it's not a cocoon. All I say is, woo, woo. Say, Roger, woo. Roger, there's something tickling me on top of my head. What is it? Wait a minute, boss. Well, how could I ever be so careless? What's wrong? I left a goldfish in the bowl. <laughs> a goldfish? Well, get him out. Take the bowl off. If I do that, I'll lose my place. <laughs> I don't care. Take this goldfish bowl off my head. It's stuck, boss. Stop. Well, take the handle of the scissors and tap it a little. Yes, sir. Well, you did it. Are you happy? Now, where'd that goldfish go? Never mind the goldfish. <laughs> Finish cutting my hair. I can't understand how that bowl got stuck. I can. Every time you read an article about yourself, your head swells two inches. <laughs> that all depends on whether the article is good or bad, Miss Livingston. Hurry up, Rochester. I want to go to a movie. A movie? Oh, oh, Rochester, will you please come in the other room? I want to talk to you a minute. Yes, Miss Livingston. What do you want to talk to him about? Never mind. Look for the goldfish. I'll be right back. Uh, now, Rochester, the gang's coming over here pretty soon, and we're going to throw a surprise party for Mr. Benny. A surprise party? Yes. Now, it's up to us to see that he stays right here in the house. Oh, he won't go out tonight unless he gets a date. Then what am I worrying about? <laughs> Come on, let's go back. All right, Mitzi, if you gotta work, you gotta work. Goodbye. Hmm. Oh, oh, say, Mary, would you like to go to a movie tonight and see Gary Cooper and Sergeant York? I saw that. What's the other feature? Oh, I don't know. Let's take a chance. I thought so. <laughs> well, it's a swell double bill. Are you all through with my haircut, Rochester? Yes, sir. Good. Now, just put a little bay rum on so I'll smell sweet. Uh-oh. Rochester, what became of the bay rum? The which? The bay rum. Where is it? Well, the uh, bay is in San Francisco. I don't know what happened to the rum. <laughs> oh, 
my goodness. I wish you wouldn't drink everything in this house. Well, I'm going to the movies even if I have to go alone. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. Why don't you let me give you a manicure? I don't want a manicure. I'm going to a movie. It's Saturday night and I... Oh, oh, hello, Dennis. What are you doing here? Happy birthday, Mr. Benny. Surprise! Surprise! Dennis! Am I too early? Dennis! <laughs> surprise? What are you talking about? Well, uh, he's surprised because you've got long sideburns and you look just like Cesar Romero. Oh. Oh, thanks, kid. You're welcome. Gee, I nearly spilled the beans, didn't I? Quiet! <laughs> hmm. What are you doing here anyway, kid? Oh, nothing. Say, Mr. Benny, you and Abraham Lincoln both have the same birthday, don't you? Well, not quiet, Dennis. You see, my birthday is February the 14th, and Abe Lincoln's is February the 12th. Yeah, Lincoln is two days older than Jack. <laughs> Mary, we weren't born in the same year. In fact, I barely remember them. <laughs> well, thanks again, Dennis. Oh, say, that reminds me, Mr. Benny. You know what I'm going to sing on the program tomorrow? What? Jerome Kern's new song, Abe Lincoln Had Just One Country. Well, that's very appropriate, Dennis. What's well, so wrong, kids? I'm going to a movie. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Don't you want to hear the song? Sing it for him, Dennis. I can hear it tomorrow. You'll hear it right now. Come on, Dennis. Okay. I'm sure sorry I let the cat out of the B-A-G. Dennis, will you please sing your song? What's all the mystery about, for heaven's sake? Oh, ho! I think I get it. I smell an R-A-T. <laughs> Take a lesson from old Abe Lincoln in times of stormy weather. Take a lesson from old Abe Lincoln. Let's face the storm together. Abe Lincoln had just one country and one banner to wave. One union of brave brothers no brothers and slave others we're still marching along with Lincoln with one banner to wave this union was born in freedom and this union must live in freedom and this freedom is worth saving and worth fighting Dennis, that was positively thrilling. Well, if I'm going to a movie, I might as well get started. Or maybe I should stay at home in case uh, anybody drops in. Hmm? Yeah, let's stay here and play bridge. I don't feel like bridge. What else can we play? Might I suggest a few rubbers of ivory gin rummy? <laughs> Rochester, put those dice back in your pocket. Let's go to a picture, Mr. Benny. Come on. I am not going to leave the house until the gang gets here and surprises me. So there. Well, you see, Dennis, you spoiled everything. Oh, yeah, I was wise. Well, then there's no use keeping it a secret. The gang will be here in a few minutes and bring you a present. Oh, a birthday present, eh? Well. Say, Rochester, go out in the kitchen and fix up a big tray of sandwiches. Yes, ma'am. Don't you cut one slice of bread. Listen, Mary, when your friends give you a surprise party, they're supposed to bring the food. <laughs> 
Now do it right. <laughs> Gonna do it at all. <laughs> Well, don't worry, we bought cold cuts, cheese, bread, and lots of stuff. Oh. And here's a nickel. We may need water for coffee. <laughs> the coffee I'll furnish. And I'll also contribute some homemade fudge. All I say is that... Hey, Jack, look who's here. Oh, yes, it's Mr. Billingsley playing soldier again. <laughs> Company! Oh! Well... Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Billingsley. Good evening. At ease, man. <laughs> good evening, Mr. Benny. Still up and about, I see. Yes, yes, I didn't feel like going to bed. I'm a little disappointed in you. I blew taps over an hour ago. <laughs> yes, I... I know, but you see, uh, some visitors dropped in, and we... Visitors, eh? May I see their passes? <laughs> Oh, oh, they're on our side, Mr. Billingsley. They know the password and everything. Give them the password, Mary. I am not going to bray like a jackass for anybody. <laughs> All right, I'll do it for you. Hee-haw. Pass, friend. <laughs> oh, oh, say, Mr. Billingsley, I notice you're wearing a sun helmet. Are you headed for the tropics? No, I'm eating at Chasen's tonight. <laughs> Good, good. Well, see you later, Mr. Billingsley. Good night. Good night. Company, forward, dance. Dance? <laughs> well, there he goes. Some soldier is carrying a flit gun. It works out, Mary. To him, moths are airplanes. But it keeps him busy. You know, one thing about Mr. Billingsley... Hey, hey, that must be the gang now. Now, for heaven's sake, Jack, don't spoil it. Act surprised. Don't worry, I'm an actor. Say, I wonder who that is. Come in! Surprise! <laughs> well! Surprise! Oh, and the orchestra, boys! Well! <laughs> Oh, my goodness, what is this? What's going on here? It's a surprise party for you, Jack. Yeah, Jackson, a surprise party for our good old boss. For good old me? <laughs> Gee, fellas, I don't know what to say. Here I was, just spending a quiet evening at home, never dreaming that... Don't overdo it. <laughs> never... Never dreaming that you, you fellas were going to throw a surprise party just, <laughs> just, just for me. <laughs> Shall we give him his present now, Don? <laughs> no, nah, let's give it to him later. <laughs> give it to me now while I'm sentimental. <laughs> Hand it over. Not so fast, Jackson. A speech goes with this. Take it, Don. Speech, speech. Where's the present? <clears throat> Jack, on behalf of Mary, Phil, Dennis, Rochester, and myself... Yes, yes. ...and all the boys in the band, Frankie, Charlie, Mitch, Sam, Skippy... Yeah, look, Fletcher, you don't have to name them. Look, I I know the boys. And on behalf of Jell-O and those delicious flavors... This I can't stop. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime, I would like to present you with this lovely token of our esteem and affection. Well... Here you are, Jackson. Open it up. We hope you like it. Oh, boy... Gee, here I, here I was sitting at home, never dreaming that. Oh, for Pete's sake! Oh, fellas, you shouldn't have done it. You like it, Jack? Like it? Why, it's just what I needed. What is it, boy? A can of crab meat. <laughs> And the big size, too. You know, that stuff is hard to get nowadays. Oh, Rochester, get the can opener and we'll taste it. There's a can opener with it. Oh, for, well, wonders never cease. <laughs> Crab me. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's have some fun. Yeah, for I'm a jolly good fellow. I'm a jolly good fellow. For... Oh, someone at the door. Come in. Come in. Well, it's a Western Union boy. Hello there. Hello. 
Just friends, huh? To everyone! Well, Schlapperman, this is a surprise I didn't figure on. What's the idea of wearing a Western Union uniform? Quiet. I told my wife I'm drafted. <laughs> oh, well, what's this all about, Schlepp? Have you got a message for me? Have I got a message? A singing telegram delivered in person by Bing Schlepperman. Bing, eh? With him, it's horses. With me, it's our bicycle. Well, let's have the greeting, Schlepp. Go ahead. All right. Hit it, boys. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, Jack Benny. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh sabotage, eh? Huh? <laughs> happy birthday. Jack Benny, happy birthday to you. Hey, thank you, Schlepperman. That was wonderful, Schlepp, wonderful. Now stick around, we're all gonna have some fun. Bring the sandwiches, Rochester. Yeah, first we'll eat, and then we'll, woo, woo, and then we'll, woo, woo, woo. Jack, what's the matter with you? I found that goldfish and went down my back. Woo! Woo! Grab it! Darn you, Rochester, the next time you give me a hair... Woo! Woo! Watch out what you're doing! And here's something every dessert lover will certainly be interested in hearing about. Lots of folks are discovering how much richer, how much more delicious Jell-O is today than it's ever been before. Never in all the years since it became America's favorite gelatin dessert has Jell-O been so gloriously good. And it's all because of Jell-O's new locked-in flavor. By means of a marvelous process exclusive with Jell-O, Jell-O locks its famous flavor right into the tiny Jell-O particles, protects it for your enjoyment, gives every dessert you make with it a livelier extra goodness. As much as you've liked Jell-O before, you'll like it even more now that Jell-O's swell, intriguing flavor is actually locked in. For here's Jell-O at its delicious best. The same Jell-O you've always known and loved, but better, richer, more of a tempting treat than ever, thanks to Jell-O's locked-in flavor. Prove for yourself that Jell-O's flavor really is locked in. Open a package of Jell-O. Notice that there's no sweet, fruity odor, no telltale aroma to warn of escaping flavor. Yet the moment you dissolve those tiny Jell-O particles, out pours their captive flavor in a rush of richness. So treat yourself and your family to the thrill of Jell-O's new and greater goodness. Order several packages of Jell-O from your grocer tomorrow and see if you don't agree that Jell-O's new locked-in flavor makes Jell-O better than ever. This is the last number of the 20th program in the current Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday at the, same, at the same time, broadcasting from the U.S. Army Post at the Presidio in San Francisco. Good night, folks. The Jell-O Show is written by Bill Morrow and Eddie Beloyne. Tomorrow when you order Jell-O, be sure to order Jell-O puddings too. Jell-O puddings are rich, luscious puddings that you make with milk. And they come in three swell flavors, chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch. There's Jell-O chocolate pudding, delightfully smooth and mellow, a pudding that simply tops for grand creamy taste. With a distinctive chocolate flavor developed exclusively for Jell-O puddings, by the famous Walter Baker chocolate people. So tomorrow, when you order Jell-O, ask for Jell-O puddings. They're just like grandma's, only more so. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles. <laughs>